If you could, would you invest in songs like Despacito and Shape of You by Ed Sheeran? Nah, me neither, they're absolute muck. But what about songs like uh, Journeys, Don't Stop Believing, or The Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams, or even Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You? Those songs are timeless, so they must put in a steady stream of income every year, right? On today's video, I want to talk to you about a company called Hypnosis, who have come up with an innovative kind of investment trust style company that focuses on earning money from royalty income by buying up loads of, say, back catalogs from different artists and loads of very popular songs. Over the last two decades, the music industry has probably gone through one of the most transformative and disruptive times in its history. We went from buying every CD of their favourite bands to then downloading all of their songs illegally and now it's come back full circle to where we're actually paying a monthly subscription to get access to any song we want whenever we want it. This change in the way we actually buy our music is fairly significant because Back in the older days, it was really kind of a discretionary or even a luxury purchase for most people. But now it has become more of a utility. Every month without fail, you pay your electricity, your phone bill, you pay your gas, your rent, and now you pay your music subscription. In 2020, there was about 450 million people worldwide who were paying for these monthly streaming services. But this is expected to grow to approximately 2 billion people by 2030. This should mean that the possible income from royalties should increase substantially over the next decade. Now let's talk a little bit more about the Hypnosis Songs Fund itself. So the company went public in July of 2018. Its ticker symbol is SONG. And since then, it has amassed a huge amount of music rights. So by the end of 2020, it had over 60,000 songs from over 161 different artists. And this was spread across six different genres and they had 2,845 number one hits out of that 60,000 songs. Out of the Spotify top 25 listen to songs of all time, they have eight of that 25 on the list as you can see here. But this is an old list now, this is dated from back in the middle of 2020. Let's have a quick look now at how their portfolio of songs is actually split by genre and by age. So their portfolio, they mostly have pop songs, so 44.4% of their total songs are pop. The next up is rock at 27.6% and then they have R&B at 8.8% and then a bit of dance music there at 5.5%. And then if we look at the age of their portfolio, so only 6% of their portfolio are songs that were released in the last three years. The majority of it is coming from between 3 and 10 years and over 10 years. So it seems like their strategy is to buy up most of the classic songs that they can get. But how do they actually earn their income? So they have 6 different income streams and I just want to go through them now so we can get a better understanding of how their business actually works. So as you can see here, they earn 36% of the revenue from streaming. So that would be on platforms like Spotify. 28% of their income actually comes from performance revenue. So this is from artists actually performing the songs that they own. So you'd imagine this took a massive hit obviously in the last year with COVID. 14% of the revenue actually comes from mechanical. So this is from CDs and records and all that kind of stuff. And another 14% of their income actually comes from synchronization. So this is when the music that they own is actually used in say movies, in TV shows, in ads, in games. But there's another possible income stream that I'm thinking that they might have in the future that there isn't much mention of on their website so far, but I'll talk about this a little bit later. The great thing about their income streams is they are non-cyclical. Whether it's boom times or bust, we always listen to music. It's one of the last things that we're going to call out of our expenses. Everybody needs a little bit of music in their life. Next up, let's talk about the company's CEO and founder, Merck Mercuriadis. I probably absolutely butchered that name, but let's keep going. This guy has been in the music industry for pretty much all of his life, and he seems like he's a bit of a legend of the game. He's managed a lot of big names such as Elton John here, Guns N' Roses, Iron Maiden, Morrissey, The Pet Shop Boys, Mary J. Blige, and the list kind of goes on and on there. So obviously this is a great thing that someone like this is the head of the company. I can't imagine artists would be as comfortable actually selling their music rights to a company who was run by say somebody who was like a banker or something like that before. So I think the company's success really depends on this guy staying at the helm. And they actually mentioned this as one of the risk factors in their annual report which I'll talk about a little bit later as well. Now let's take a brief look at their financial performance and their share price. So the company at the moment is valued at around $1.7 billion. Their last reported income showed a profit of £44.8 million in the six months to September 20. This compared to a profit of 65.6 in the 12 months up to March 20. So it definitely looks like it's going to be quite easy for them to beat their previous year's income target. 
they might hit the 80 or 90 million pounds mark profit for the year so for the year end is in march 21 so we should see the results for these in the coming weeks their share price is currently one pound and 24 pence and that is an increase of about 21 percent in the last 12 months now let's have a brief look at the company's kind of pe ratio so the pe ratio for the last fiscal year was 19.61 so it's pretty much on target there around the 20 so you wouldn't say that it's either over or undervalued at the moment when you exclude extraordinary items there you can see the pe ratio in that case is up around 27 but this is definitely more of a dividend stock than a growth stock as they actually pay out a high percentage of their profits every year as dividends so they have committed to paying out about five pence per share at the moment so that is around four and a half percent dividend yield which, which is a pretty high dividend yield lastly i want to talk about some of the risks faced in the company and possible opportunity that they might be able to capitalize on as well in the company's last filed annual return these next three risks were number one two and three on the list so these are probably the three biggest risks that the company has to deal with on an ongoing basis. Their first one is due diligence risk. So this is obviously when they're going to buy a catalog of songs from an artist. They probably have to rely on a lot of data that the artist and their financial people actually give to them and try and base their investment decision on whether to buy it or not on a lot of data that they haven't actually produced themselves. So it's easy enough to make a mistake and buy something that is not going to give you the return that you want to get out of it. The next risk that they mentioned in their annual return is the key person risk which I mentioned there earlier on. They stress the importance of Merck Mercuridis to the future success of the company. The music industry is a tricky place and reputation goes a long way so if Merck was ever to damage his reputation in any way or else to become ill this would have a massive impact on the company. And the third biggest risk that they have here is any sudden change to the royalty rates that are paid out for the sounds so obviously they make a lot of money from their royalties so if there's any change in the royalty rates that will have a significant impact on their earnings one opportunity though i believe the company is well placed to take advantage of which has only really appeared in the last few months is the explosion of the nft market as you can see for example recently kings of leon made 2 million from nft sales of their latest album i haven't been able to find much information on how nfts are going to fit into their future strategy but they do have an nft licensing section on their website now it will be interesting to see how large this stream of income could be become for them if it is a sizable stream of income you would imagine that will be a sharp increase in the company's valuation and just to be clear this video was not made for any financial advice it's purely for entertainment purposes if you do plan on investing in the stock make sure and do your own research and get some advice first i myself i'm going to add this stock to my portfolio as i want to try and decrease slightly my exposure to the u.s economy because i think i have a bit too many stocks that are just purely based in the u.s and there's a lot of foreign exchange risk that goes with that as well so i hope you found this video interesting and if you did tell your friendly neighborhood spider-man about the channel i would really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel